All right, we're here today to talk about why neon gas lights up and gives such pretty colors. We're going to talk about atom and their spectra. By spectra, I mean they make a pattern in the light that they give off. All right, so let's start. The first question we're going to ask is what causes atomic emission atomic emission spectra. Before we can answer that, we need to understand that, I think maybe, there, that's a little better. We need to understand that light travels as waves. All right, as light travels as waves, we have several vocabulary words. The most important one is wavelength. Now let's see if I can draw on this. Wavelength. Wavelength is represented by the little goofy Greek letter lambda. And lambda is, is the Greek letter for L. And it looks like an upside down Y. Now, I've had kids who have refused, who wanted to refuse to use this symbol, but you got to learn it. It's not that big of a deal. I promise. They're like, why can't we just have length or way, W for wavelength? No. We're going to use this. All right. The other thing we need to understand about light, when we're talking about wavelength, wavelength is the length from here to here. And then frequency is the number of wavelengths that go past a given point in an amount of time. So frequency we call, uh, we use the Greek letter nu, which is kind of a little V that's being blown by the wind. We call that, it's a cycle, so it's the number of waves per amount of time. And the one we use is hertz. Hertz is equal to 1 over s, meaning waves per second. All right, so the number of time the crest, the top of the wavelength, comes by, that is what a hertz is. So, light travels in waves. We can talk about wavelength, which is the distance between crests. We can talk about wave, uh, wave frequency, which is the um, number of times the wave passes in a given amount of time. We can also talk about amplitude, which is the height of the waves, but we don't need to worry about that right now for what we're doing. All right, so light travels in waves. Light travels is in waves and when you look at light through a spectrophotometer you can see different things about that light including the wavelength of the light um, now all light waves move at the same speed all light waves move at the speed of light duh and that's 10 to the 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second but if you look back here we have a short wavelength, that's going to be a high frequency. If I draw a long wavelength, won't it make sense? The longer the wavelength, the lower the frequency. So a long wavelength is a low frequency. A short wavelength is a high frequency. So they are inversely proportional. As the wavelength gets bigger, the frequency goes down. As the wavelength gets smaller, the frequency increases. So we can write them, the speed of light is equal to the wavelength times the frequency of a given type of light. See, low frequency, we have a long wavelength. High frequency, we have a short wavelength. According to the wave model, light consists of what we call electromagnetic waves. Electromagnetic waves include the whole electromagnetic spectrum. The electromagnetic radiation includes radio waves, microwaves, infrared waves, visible light, ultraviolet, x-rays, and gamma rays. I was listening to the chiefs on the radio here while I was watching on TV, so I was using radio waves in here. I used a microwave to heat up my coffee this morning. Um, 
you use infrared waves when you if you've ever seen any of the TV shows where they have the uh, firemen have the the camera the special camera or like the ghost hunter shows the FLIR camera and you look through that and you can see infrared waves it's by uh, related to heat visible light of course is the light we see ultraviolet waves are we know about because we talk about getting wearing sunscreen because ultraviolet rays can penetrate your skin and mess up your DNA and your cells x-rays of course you may have had an x-ray at the doctor's office gamma radiation is the radiation uh, that is released by um, nuclear bombs or by nuclear decay all right the sun and the incandescent light bulb emit white light which consists of light with a continuous range of wavelengths and frequencies when sunlight passes through a prism you guys know what a prism is sunlight passes through a prism you get a rainbow and hopefully you've all seen that well we're going to learn more about that here okay this piece in the middle that's colorful is the visible light but notice that there's a whole bunch of other light and this is just a small piece visible light is only a small piece of light down at this end we have very long waves radio waves are very long they're about uh, the length of a football field 10 to the second meters is 100 meters a football field's 100 yards so it's a little shorter than 100 meters but radio waves are very very large all right microwaves are very very small oh, my picture's in the way again 10 to the negative 14th which is 0 0.00056789101213 14th of a meter teeny tiny okay the size of a nucleus because it's comes from nuclear reactions now how can you remember this I have been teaching this for many years and I taught in junior high I taught earth science which we always studied astronomy in one quarter and this is where we learned it because the only way to learn about stars is by looking at them and stars give off light so many years ago 20 years ago as a matter of fact I had two young men Scotty Young and Spencer Booth sitting in my class and they made up a song to help them remember all the different types of wavelengths of light since that time I've taught that every year and I've had students who I had one student who tweeted me that she had um, used it in her chemistry class sang the song in front of her professor and and I had another kid who was at K-State in um, chemistry who's now married he um, sent me an email or no Facebook message saying I just use the electromagnetic song in my class to pass a test so this is something that people use and this is how it goes now I'm gonna start on the right end and go from right to left and I'm gonna be using the words that are in the middle here okay it's kind of a wrap and if I was in front of you and the next time I am in front of you I will dance for you even while I sing it okay it goes Gamma rays, x-rays, ultraviolet tooth, visible infrared, microwave the food, turn on the radio, and dance a little too. This guy has radar waves. I've never used that one before. Okay, so we're going to do it again. Now you have to try to sing it with me. Gamma rays, x-rays, ultraviolet tooth, visible infrared, microwave the food, turn on the radio, and dance a little too my radio for listening to the Chiefs on. It's snowing in Denver right now and the Chiefs are up. All right, so electromagnetic spectrum is important. Now, why is it important? Well, here's an example of a prism. I probably should have put that slide before, breaking light into the colors of the rainbow. So we had people look at Bohr in particular looking at um, hydrogen gas and exciting the hydrogen gas by putting energy through a lamp and when he did that 
he got spectral absorption lines or emission lines all right this is helium going through a prism and when the helium goes through the prism if you're looking with the right kind of glasses with a spectrophotometer or some gla special glasses that we have you'll see these bright lines and these bright lines are the element spectra okay every element has its own spectra these are only the spectra you see in wave in the wavelengths um, light, visible light but they have spectra on either end of that too now the big question that Teddy wants to know is why why is it that the spectrum lines do that all right so the photoelectric effect which Albert Einstein explained in the photoelectric effect electrons are ejected when light shines on a metal well it's the same with a gas that's being excited as the gas is excited the electrons they aren't completely ejected but the electrons make transitions between different energy levels okay to explain the photoelectric effect Einstein proposed that light could be, be described as quanta there's that word again quanta of energy that behaves as if they were particles so we've already said light behaves as waves now we're saying light can behave like a particle all right and they called those particles photons all right so photoelectric effect they were looking at the electrons and the fact that electrons were ejected and what must be causing that is packages of light that would knock the electrons off the metal okay we're talking about a gas we're talking about helium and why do we see these well each one of these lines corresponds to an electron getting excited and what do you do when you're watching the Chiefs game and they score a touchdown you get excited and you jump up and yell and scream at least I did when they scored the touchdown in the first first drive okay what happens when you get tired of cheering at the football game and the touchdowns over you sit back down that's what electrons do the energy going through the lamp excites those electrons and as they jump up they use energy and when they fall back they release energy in the form of a photon all right and this is as it's stated if you think about here's a nucleus here's an electron as the energy comes in the electron is going to get excited and he's going to jump out to a different energy level now remember we said that they can only go from one energy level to another oh we just pick six woohoo we can only go from one energy level to another you can't go in between it takes a certain amount of energy a quanta of energy and that quanta of energy then when the electron falls back is released as a photon and we can visibly see that if it's in the visible light range but we can measure that with a spectrophotometer all right so we're back to the helium spectrum and I think I've just explained all this the energy absorbed by the electron to move from its current energy level to a higher level is identical to the energy of the light emitted as it drops back to its original energy level this is what we call atomic emission spectrum and each atom has its own spectrum and no two elements have the same it's like fingerprints all right there you go that is a little bit about electrons and light